After the failure of two Soviet offensives that took place in May and at the end of June, the situation on the Kuban front stabilizes until autumn and a lull in ground operations begins. Attention now turns northward, where the Soviet and German armies are locked in the largest mechanized battle in military history. The Battle of the Kursk Salient has begun in the central sector of the Eastern Front. Unlike the relatively calm situation on the ground, the air battle above the Kuban front does not cease in the summer heat. There are daily clashes in the air and naval forces of both sides attempt to interdict each other's sea routes in an attempt to disrupt supplies and reinforcements. Combat aircraft search for targets of opportunity at sea and in the rear of the enemy. In August, North Caucasus Front Headquarters receives an order from Stavka to prepare for the Novorossiysk Taman operation. Its goal is to destroy the German 17th Army and deny it the ability to retreat to Crimea. The final round of the Kuban campaign, one that will last for several months, draws closer. Well, don't tell them I said anything, but the formation actually seems to be keeping up this time. And this is because, well, it's hard to say what it is. I did do a few more circles around the field than usual this time, so maybe they somehow figured something out in the process of that? I really don't know. But anyway, uh, as you saw there, it is now the 8th of June. Uh, after that little disastrous last mission, the squadron was left with only three aircraft. And they flew one mission, without me, a few days after that with those three, and then essentially lack of serviceable aircraft and bad weather kept us on the ground for, well, over a month. And the situation at the front has changed quite a bit. Ground operations have kind of slowed down because everything's happening at the Kursk, but, well, will be in July anyway. And, well, but the air war is still as heated as always. Today's target is a bridge at Tembruk. Is it a bridge, right? Yeah, a bridge. I know what it is. And so myself and so, well, including myself, nine A-20s will be going and hitting it. The squadron has obviously been reinforced with more aircraft and personnel since that disastrous emission. We are about here now, I think. And it, the wind is still pretty stiff, though we're not at uh, the altitude we're designated to bomb from yet. We may have to bomb from lower today, given what the cloud cover situation is like, but we'll have to see what it is over the target, probably. Um, yeah, if we passed all those rivers. What's the next landmark, then? Probably another river crossing, and then some slightly chubby rivers and lakes out ahead of us. Anyway, I should be able to figure that out. And I can probably come back as we get closer to the target, since, well, navigation is not the most interesting thing. So, uh oh. That, oh no. Uh, and it's six o'clock. Well, we're right on our way into the target, so I'm not gonna change course and I'm not gonna jump into the gunner's seat because I'll just shoot the tail off. And I need to be making the bomb run. So, hopefully, nothing bad happens here. This lake with the island in it here um, was my last landmark on the way into the target. 
this town here between the two lakes. The northwest corner of that town is where the target should be. I didn't mention earlier what our loadout was. We've got four 250-kilogram bombs slung under the wings, and that's it. So, got to put them right on target. Not that I think that's going to be a problem. Although the wind is pretty stiff today, we are flying lower than usual, which is going to mitigate things a little bit. Zero one zero, eh? Uh, I got to... whoops. Oh no, it's still 13 meters per second. I need to... whoops. <laughs> Adjust that slightly. We don't need to open the bomb bay doors, because the bombs are all under the wings. Those P-39s that were taking off earlier should be covering us on our way in. So hopefully that's not going to be a problem. Yeah, I think I can pretty well pick out the town now. Airspeed. Oh. Airspeed is 340 now. I've been gradually closing the cowl flaps over the course of the mission, because... There's been no need. The uh, engines have been cool enough and we've sped up a little bit as a result. Which is fine. Since I did decide we were going to bomb from low altitude today. Because the cloud cover is pretty thick over the target. And I wanted to be sure we'd be able to hit it on the first pass. So... Since I've got a little bit of time, I kind of just want to double check all my figures. Altitude 1200 meters, airspeed 340, bomb interval... I might actually bunch those up a little bit. Maybe. Mm, that doesn't seem like... No, I'll put it back where it was. And we'll drop all four at the same time. Let me double check the map here. Yeah, right at the northwest corner of Tenru. Yeah, should be able to pick that out in time. Okay, in that case, have the formation do do like me. So they should drop their bombs when I do. The key command for that is Alt Four. I have to be most most very 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 cautious not to press Alt F Four. This would result in madness. There we go. Oh yeah, there's the town. And there's the river. I think I can guess where the bridge is going to be. So we'll come a little bit to port here. And I'm just going to have to ignore the fact that there are potential enemy fighters nearby and hope that those P-39s can deal with them. And I haven't come quite far enough to want a wind correction adjustment. Airspeed is still 340. Yeah, I think we're actually going to that into bomb mode. Make sure that's adjusted properly. Yeah, that looks like a road. Okay. Well, all we really have to do is wait. And hope that we don't get shot to pieces like before. I could actually look out the back. I not seemingly immediately under attack, so that's probably okay. Our egress routes, uh, per the map, is supposed to be a little bit north, but I could also just turn around and use the Bendix gauge to fly back to Kornovskaya. Probably. We'll see. Gauging fighter range 2 kilometers. Hmm. Yeah. What? Our target, the bridge that's on the main road. Yes. And the main road goes a little bit north, and then... Oh, yeah, I think I can... I can see where the bridge is based on the road. Can't quite see the bridge itself yet. Mm, so we'll be bombing perpendicular to the bridge. That's not ideal, but we'll just have to make it work. In that case, I actually will tighten up my bombs a little bit. And I will not second-guess myself this time. Yeah, that's got to be the bridge. No doubt about it. Airspeed, still 340. Altitude is a hair over 1,200, but it's in increments of 100, so what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Verify the wind data, I guess. From 010 at 13 meters per second.
We've got that whacked in. I don't see anything going too horribly wrong. Still have the guys in V formation. Ideally I'd put them in column, but I don't know if they will... Well, when I do the drop bombs on my command... Command, it will always have them assume the V formation, and I'm not sure if that carries through if I have the formation change, if that makes sense. Nah. Things I should try in a quick mission before hopping into here, probably, but oh well. Maybe I can do that before next time. Assuming we survive this time, which is by no means a given. Come slightly to port. Double checking all the data again, speed, 340, yeah, I think we're good. Switch over to bomb mode, actually maybe not quite yet. Yeah, have the bridge clearly in sight. It looks a bit damaged, so I guess we're re-bombing a target that's already been bombed. Re, but whatever. We carry out our orders. Starboard. Yeah, that bridge is pretty <laughs> thoroughly toasted already. I'm sensing a theme with these bridge missions. Bomb a bridge that is already destroyed. But... Stand by. Stand by. I'll try and hit the part that's not quite knocked down yet. How about that? Stand by. Bomb's gone! And since there don't seem to be any fighters immediately on our tail, I will watch the effect on target. Through the bomb site, that is. Teleostogena, target destroyed. Ah, when I can't read the subtitles, it's helpful to understand a bit of Russian. The sound objective completed? Yeah, well. <laughs> Yeah, since someone already bombed the bridge, even if we miss, it's not that big a deal, but I don't miss, he says. There we go. Splatted the bridge even more thoroughly and everything around it. So, egress heading without wind correction would be 068, and that's going not entirely into the wind, but sort of not too far gone from it either. At any rate, we can sort of almost follow the coastline up for a little while, or stay a little bit inboard of the coastline, really. Up through the swamps. Piggy back here. A few any aircraft guns opening up. The flak around our targets has, in general, not been as heavy as I've been expecting. I'll roll out on a little bit short. Hmm. Actually, maybe not. I'll roll out on 068 for now and start working on the wind correction. For the trip home, so, any major landmarks? Uh, up through the middle of the swamps, more or less. So, wind from 010, 07, yeah, little, whoops, at 13, that's 14. So, we're doing about 065, winds from 010. So we'll do zero five zero on the correction for now, which is probably not the right path, but what do I know? Okay. Oops. And run out the site. Oh, except this isn't gonna. Nope. Okay. I'll have to assume that the correction. That will get pushed a little bit to the right by the wind, but not that big a deal. I'll say it's about five degrees since it was about ten degrees when we were at when we were almost perpendicular to the wind, and now we're at much more of a quartering angle to it. So yeah, but 
I'll worry about the navigation and boring things like that and come back either when we're getting shot to pieces by German fighters or when we've uh, kumbaya made it home. A blissfully uneventful mission draws near to its conclusion as Koronovska airfield slides into view once again. <laughs> I haven't seen it in a while, but there we go. Well, haven't seen it from making an approach to land at it. I really flubbed that, didn't I? Oh well. I will let the rest of the formation know that they can return to base. So they'll just set up their own approaches a ways behind me and I don't have to worry about them. I'll bring the power back. Mixture will come up into auto rich. And props will come up to reasonably high RPM, just in case we have to really hit it for a go around. And throttles will come right back. And props to some degree, because I need to lose some speed here. So I'll do a bit of an ugly slip. That ought to do it. Coming back through 200. I had the GUI turned off because there's this bloody engaging fighter notification that won't go away and it's such an eyesore. But... Oh well. He's carrying a lot of speed here. <laughs> I'll just casually fly right over there. You know what, I actually do need the... Uh, do I, oh, maybe that'll push it off the... No, it won't. Whatever. Whoops, that's not good. Bring the gear down, we're a little fast for it, but... I need to kill some speed here. Flaps coming down. There we go. Flap set, and once the flaps are down, this airplane will bleed speed very quickly, so I need to be a little bit conscious of that. The only other thing I wanted to mention was uh, I remembered from earlier when it came to resolving the formation issues it was one John Clay who had commented on a previous video suggesting that I do circuits around the field so thank you for that I had been doing one circle around the field but it seems like doing more than one actually did fix the formation issues so well to some degree I still have to use very low power settings on the climb up if they're well in order to have them keep up but I can work with it in the shadow of a cloud here. And flare, power's coming back. And reasonably smooth touchdown. All right. You've probably seen enough of the taxis in and shut down so as to have them not be worth uh, showing this time. So I can Probably side off. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. And I suppose I'll. Uh, well, I shall return in the next mission. Toodle.